don't punch a hole in your brother with superpowers and say it's a good kindergarten superpower story. Hello and welcome back to Secret Confessor, a Sword of Truth podcast. My name's Lauren. And I'm Frank. And today we are going to be discussing chapter 29 of Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind. Welcome. Welcome. To my castle. (laughs) And you think that's what Giller sounds like, do you? Yeah, he's got a high-pitched voice for sure. Yeah, I haven't practiced my Princess Violet voice. Well, you know what makes that hard? What? Her indeterminate age. Right, we're ranging anywhere from like 5 <laughs> to like 12, 13, I guess. Because she could be 20. She's I don't know. definitely not 20. Well, she could be. It's implied her and Rachel are the same age. I don't know how old Rachel is either. Well, she likes dolls. She does. Today, we're wearing pretty in pink. I think this is a color that perhaps Princess Violet would, would like. The Principessa herself. And we have a tiara, which, you know, came from Queen Melina's uh, jewel room. Absolutely. I think we're going to be spending a lot of time in there soon. Yes, yes. And Me too. I have the wizard Giller here. It's Giller. <laughs> it's giving the Giller. The only living wizard in the Midlands. Yeah. Because he didn't commit the suicide pact. To yeah, well, how do you get out of it? Because of the queen? He got out of it because he just said, fuck this. Honestly, smart because yeah, he's alive. Caitlin didn't need it. Actually, you know, she didn't know that at the time, though. They didn't do a a good enough job. Yeah. Looking into things. Yeah. Okay, so I guess should I start with the same question I asked you last time? uh, Remind me, what was that? Did you like this chapter? You know, after reflecting and writing my notes. Oh. um, No, I actually Um, hated this fucking chapter. I thought maybe, okay, I didn't like it at all reading it kind of reflected on it a bit before we were filming was like maybe there's something here Mm, that's it (laughs) that's as far as i got it's so bare bones and so basic and stupid that it can only go up that's how it feels yes that's true but that might not be true so we'll we'll see first apologies because people seem to like this plot line Uh uh-huh but to be fair if i were if I had just read this in a oh yeah sea of like a bunch of chapters mm-hmm. where this plot continues on, I would obviously not be getting as hung up on it. No, it's the analysis of this chapter that really sucks. <laughs> it didn't. It it wishes that no one was going to analyze it. Yeah, reading it twice, bad, bad feeling. Yeah, so it's hard because I'm kind of like, okay, if this plot picks up coming up, I could see yeah. just sort of relegating the badness of this part to like the depths of your memory where you're like, Oh, I don't need to really focus on that. And you probably don't. You probably but don't. unfortunately we're going to. We uh yeah, this is what this is all about. Our pain is your pleasure, which is a theme of Terry's work. So that's it why is. we're here. God, so true. <laughs> and we will see So that kind of makes of you. that kind of makes the audience dark and raw. Um, in a way thank you father Rawl, for um watching and hitting the subscribe button yeah uh, with your aegis or whatever it's called does he have one <laughs> why are you saying that oh my god imagine how op he'd be he has more oh sith, so sith Rawl, like mord Rawl, mord Rawl. <laughs> Guys, Imagine. guys wow nobody wow. thought of that nobody thought of that book 97 of the sort of truth series more, yeah, maybe more draw returns. Perhaps that does happen. I don't think it, I. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I did. It, I definitely didn't enjoy reading it again. I. It's hard because it's like I so rarely get to read <laughs> the book, yeah. and when I get a chapter, and then you get this. I'm like, yeah, I get to read more, and I know I only have that one chapter to sit on for a while, and this wasn't what I wanted it to be. Oh no, no. But, I was I was excited to get new characters. Yeah, that's it, never not going to excite. It's me. hard to get a new POV and then it be this. Well, 
See, actually, I feel like maybe the opposite where I'm like, because I'm so excited for a new POV, I think I'll give it a lot of allowances in a way. Yes, and I'm saying it cashed in all those allowances <laughs> yeah. and then took out a loan. So oh my God. Uh, one more important bit oh. of information about Geller. Yeah, what? My man is bald and Whoa. so am I. That's oh, right. Oh, that's so convincing. Oh, my God. The what pr- a... <laughs> I actually shaved my head for this. The it's crazy. The effects budget yeah. is unparalleled yep. <laughs> on the Secret Confessor uh-huh. podcast. Yep. The, the temple flaps are flapping, but Giller's here, baby. It's a good distinguishing characteristic from Zed. Yeah. The baldness. Yeah, correct. Because everything else is... Pretty much the same. He acts Great very anymore. similar. He acts another, quite similar. Another wizard in our midst. Yeah, he is such a wizard. And... But also, this man is basic. This man is the, the carbon copy of the clone of if someone puts a wizard on a cereal box. Yeah. That's this sure. motherfucker. Yeah, I guess Zed has a little bit of flair yeah, to Zed's him. Zed's got no ass. Zed's got characteristics, you know? Like, this, this dude's just like, wizard stamp. He <laughs> was interacting with a little child. Apparently. However old it, she Unclear. Is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh. Well, <laughs> Cynthia said that she likes this plot line, she thinks, maybe because it was fun on the show and the girl who oh. plays Rachel is really cute. Okay. Which made me How think, old was she on the show? No. Oh, my well, God. Well, anyway. Once again. We but I'm, I'm, the... sort of, I'm like, oh, wow, this made it onto the show. It has to. I don't know what did. The, what someone's did. got to have the box of Orden. True. Let's get into the chapter. Chapter 29. Start okay, off wait. Strong. First, we are in the Midlands, correct? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is yeah, not yeah. Tahara. No, no, no. No. It, it was never uh, said, but yeah, no. No, actually, yeah, it was. Mm. Queen Molina's in the Midlands. They might have said that they way might back have said when, that. Yeah. when they were talking about it. But her. it couldn't be in Dahara because there's uh, only one ruler in Dahara, and that is Lord Raw. Right. I thought maybe, like, queens could be beneath the lord. I don't think he'd tolerate that bullshit, if I'm being honest. We open with Princess Violet and Rachel, and the first thing of the what chapter, we, yeah. What do we, uh... <laughs> oh, I want a better sound effect. All right, come on. Once again, look know. at what I'm doing for all of you. Oh my god. Taking hits. My eyes swollen up now. So it starts off with a slap. Yeah. Rachel pretends that the slap hurts her because if she doesn't, the princess will feel inclined to hit her slap harder. Slap again. You just saw it. This is what happens. So, Continuous abuse. <laughs> we kind of just go into describing they're hanging out in what appears to be a jewelry room wardrobe of some sort yep there is a giant chest of drawers 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 draws drawers Draw. i think you could do either of those draws so it's a giant chest they're they're opening the drawers well, not they print. not shout as giant chest just for those at home <laughs> not Wondering. yet not yet not yet um we're opening them up we're taking jewelry out jewels jewelry none of it's very well described princess violet stuff trying we- it on looking in the mirror we immediately devolve into this, like most boring um approach of getting across that somebody's bad which is mm-hmm. to say that she is fat and ugly fat and ugly is giving very like dudley dursley oh yeah you know where you're like <sighs> that had more subtlety though eventually over seven books well at least we got neville to counterbalance are we Correct. gonna get a fatty at some point uh, who's okay no i don't think so right because jagang's a big fatty too right? jagang's got a big ass belly he's also strong as hell though i remember that still he he's fat arms. no because i feel like we're gonna get gratuitous descriptions of his like sweaty nasty body yes that's true right do we, do we get a good fatty it's up to you guys in the comments tell do me you, do we get a single chubber <laughs> that's a, kind of okay is there a single chubby person who's like all right in this universe yeah because this this fatty fuck is just oh she's right. awful so princess violet's using her stubby finger to uh-huh. open the drawer i'm surprised it even fits in there she, can she even get her mom's rings on that that lardo it, yeah she looks in the mirror with her plump neck and long dull hair like it's Ugh. just like why are you going in on a child like this terry relax like i mean he she's can't, definitely he can't help it. she's definitely a piece of shit but 
And there's just something really strange and off-putting about it. It's just lazy, I think. It's so lazy. And then we, like, kind of have a description of Rachel, her friend, who, friend, I don't know, her, like, hired friend. Um, her, who, uh, yeah, I, I wrote pet slave like I, I don't know what this girl is to her but she's well they kind she's of she's described as a play thing at some point i think she's described as her playmate that might be it yeah and then we get an explanation that princess violet's mother the queen the queen of what exactly um uh, millennia i don't know <laughs> <laughs> the queen it gives rachel to her so she can practice being a leader by like bossing her around i mean you know what's so funny though i always i'm trying (laughs) to be as i'm trying to figure out what it is i find so like stupid and off-putting about so much of this because i was i'm like okay tell me if george rr martin introduced that concept like say joffrey has this little boy or something yeah 100%. Hundred percent. I would, could do it. I like. I go along with it. To it's be honest, never, it's never Terry's idea. I know. Inherently, it's the it's the execution, which is. I guess is that's horrific. it. Horrific. It's like he just said the idea is is the is it. Yeah. The and right. It's like, all no, develop I, it. Yeah. My that's guy. the thing. He's just like if the idea is all you need. As like I don't think that's what kind true. of these two these two kids don't have a relationship. They're, it's not real. This doesn't feel like anything. It definitely doesn't feel like much, no. Rachel doesn't even have realistic feelings to being beaten by this person. Like, it's not like any... There's no meat in this. Joffrey having, like, a little boy that he, like, kind of, like, lorded over. That would have this, like... It would create... I don't know. Like, there would be a marinade to it. And then, like, when he eventually, like, threw him out to the dogs yeah, 17 yeah. chapters later, you'd be like, oh, that hurts because... He trusted it. I know. I think though There's some no... people are getting a similar experience from this, and I think maybe I did when I first read it too. I think it's the thing, though. I think it's like it is just the idea given to you, and when you're younger and you're a reader, you haven't had that much experience. I with think ideas. you are more maybe willing to fill in a lot of. It's exciting to like mm-hmm. fill in the gaps and be like, I've never thought of that. So if I think of it. Maybe it would be like this and this and this, and that feels fun. Why did why is that not fun anymore? I guess it's it is fun. The issue is that we are analyzing chapter by chapter too. Like if we were speeding through this, I wouldn't give two shits about Rachel's lack of complexity because I'd just be like, I finished the whole arc in like two days. I know. I don't know. And I'd be like, yeah, the arc was stupid, but I, it was fun to run right through it. Now I'm like belaboring over these non points, and I'm like, there's nothing here. It's I hard. think I would still, if I read this fast, yeah, <sighs> and then I reflected, and somebody said, "Oh, compare Princess Violet to Joffrey." Like, mm-hmm. That's his name, right? Joffrey. Joffrey. I keep thinking of like the giraffe. Toys R Us giraffe. That's that's Jeffrey. Jeffrey. It's just Jeffrey. G- but I think it's spelled with a G. Joffrey. It's Joffrey. Anyway, yeah. are you sure it's it's Joffrey? Joffrey. Hundred percent. Joffrey Baratheon. Bar- ba- Baratheon. Ba- 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 Baratheon. Is this a look? It's something. Is this a look? I feel like your head is breaking out in a rash to your forehead. I'm sure it is. I suffer for y'all. <laughs> this is not the first rash I've gotten from this podcast, and it won't be the last. No, if I read the whole arc, I'm sure I'd enjoy it more, but I think if you were still like, uh, compare Princess Violet to Joffrey, I would be like, yeah, no. No, because no, because no, no. Yeah. He's like conniving, and this is like the cartoon version of like the idea of conniving. Yeah, like I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to be like Richard and everybody. I'm trying to be in the theme of the book, get to what the objective truth is, right? Yes. So when I say, I initially start out just saying, oh, somebody being this bad maybe that's the problem that's not doesn't feel realistic and then i think is that true of everything i've read and then i think of like a character like ramsey bolton and joffrey and i go oh well that can't be it because Mm -hmm. i've read characters that are maybe worse than this decidedly maybe that's part of i don't know i've read characters that are portrayed as just like fucking horrible and been totally fine with it and into it so i go okay well that's not the problem so i need to now keep going and be like what is the problem that i'm having 
I just don't think it's complex. That's I, how I, it I don't think it has a realism to its presentation. Yeah, I just don't know how to describe. Like jo- Joffrey's it. a bad comparison because he's he's bad. Like he's how is he's that a bad, bad comparison? Bad. Like, yeah, you know I, mean? I don't think this girl is like of that level yet. I think he wants me to think that though. I think I think a better comparison would be like uh, Aaron from like the Reach, like that weird boy with the queen. I don't think that's a good comparison at all. What did he do that was bad? He was just weird. No, he became very like oh, I guess he was lordy throwing people, and throwing out, people of the... out of the sky thing, and you know, like <laughs> yeah, it, okay, okay. That's so I'm saying, so. like, but but that had a degree of like, I don't know, like madness, and there there were just so many like real human emotions on that kid that you were like, I felt that when I was a kid, but if I had all that power, maybe right. who knows? Like, well, so why can't what about this is making me not say that? Because it's like you drew a line from. Bad uh, impulse to bad action with a crayon and said, isn't this a compelling character? It's not. Yeah. Oh, girl wants to try and shiny jewelry is fat and ugly. Uh, Bad to friend. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. There's no stakes. There's no anything. There's no. She's a vehicle for plot and she's definitely going to get stabbed with a sword at like for no reason I left on the side of the road. Like this this character does not matter. Well no, of course she definitely does yeah, she doesn't matter that no. that much we could And tell. Terry hates her. <laughs> that's the worst part. I think yeah. that's it. The author needs to like hold their babies a little bit, you know? A little. Even when they craft the most despicable person, there's gotta be a little bit like the author's like, I made this. Yeah, yeah. Terry's you... like, I made this piece of shit to show you what a piece of shit this piece <laughs> yeah. of shit is. And it's like Okay, cool. That is, I think, personally, I just find that really, really boring. It's boring. Yeah, um, yeah everyone hates the fat queen and princess who kill people for no... It, we, we did it in Alice in Wonderland. I know, well, I We've gonna... been tired. So, yeah, picture, picture, I don't know, princess, big fat princess, mm-hmm. uh, little girl friend who has her hair all chopped all fucked up think i don't know rapunzel at the end of the movie um but i'll yeah, her maybe but yeah, way uh, over, yeah because princess violet likes making her ugly so violet goes over there is a marble pedestal mm-hmm. marble that, again. Mm-hmm. right i was going to say that marble bad but <laughs> when i posted that oh, those yeah. pictures of the inside of terry's house terry Terry's got a lot of marble in his home. Terry had a marble fireplace. What on earth? Terry. Well, I don't know. That's some complexity that we'll that never get answers on. That is some complexity because he uses that as a symbol for badness quite often. And then he was living his life yeah. with some marble. When I talk, my the whole beard kind of moves like Gandalf in a cartoon. It's pretty cool. I think that was the intended effect. Yeah. <laughs> The mouth doesn't. Goes over to the marble pedestal. It has an amazing gold jewel-encrusted box on top of it. What sort of box could that be? I mean, there's so many magical boxes in this story. (laughs) Um, There's at least three. Yeah, okay. um, That belong to a set of boxes. Um, And I, I don't think there's any other. Why... This goes along with everything else. Terry will not use complex language to describe magical things. Well, the boxes of Warden? I don't hate it. Really. Sure. Hate I don't it? I hate it when you combine it with shadow things well, and true. fire stick, which we'll get to. I think he's trying to keep it all real grounded. Um Why? this chapter and that point, I've been sitting on because I didn't know when it would make sense to dive into this. I want to think about it often that Terry had like was very specific in saying that he didn't consider this a fantasy series, yeah, which no. is such a strange comment. Okay. And I want to think about it, but I think maybe what you're saying has something to do with how he was perceiving it sure in terms of like he was i think trying to like stay away from all of that sort of like like that like fanciful fantastical world building language yeah, he see, didn't, the, that, I, yeah that's the key right there the world building he just refuses to do it he does the bare minimum to get a story to correct function. and he breadcrumbs only in the story never there's never a grand arc unless it's 
the grand arc. You know right. what I mean? Like, Jagang was the only attempt at a grand arc. Everything else is wrapped up by the end of its own story. There's never, like, oh, I can't wait till we get there, and he's building it up, like, in the back of our minds. It's always just... I don't know enough. I don't well, remember enough to say if that's, that's the case. So Violet picks up the box. Rachel's really nervous because she knows that the queen does not want them to touch it. Mm-hmm. Violet throws it at Rachel and Rachel catches it and is very scared. So Rachel puts it down on the floor and she's like, oh, let's not do that. And then Violet's like, what's the big deal? The magic makes it so that it can't leave the room just to foreshadow there's a wizard here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me. Violet says she's going to go watch guests arrive. Okay. Cool. No explanation. (laughs) I think he thinks it's like, it makes you curious. I guess it does. But in any other book, it would be an opportunity to drop more hints. You don't have to tell me, but like, be like, oh, oh, this thing. I don't know. She tells Rachel to clean the room the jewelry room and go down and tell the cooks to cook her meat better this time or Mm -hmm. they'll be beaten. Yep. So you're like, Oh, what a sociopath. Um, Fatty needs good meat. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're obsessed with food and beating people. Cool. Yeah. So then Rachel says, of course. And then princess Violet says, and, and thank you, princess Violet for bringing me and letting me see how pretty you look in the jewelry. Oh, yeah. It's the least I could do. You must get tired of looking at your ugly face in the mirror. I don't know. Kid stuff. But I guess like... so. How? I just need to know the age. Yeah. When I first started reading it, I think I imagined they were like 11 or 12. But then like stuff like that feels like eight. eight. Yeah. So and then I guess dolls also feel like eight. So I think I have to age them down Mm. mentally yeah i guess i don't know um i guess that's the thing it's like simultaneously trying to portray her as as bad as somebody like joffrey in terms of it being like i want this person beheaded later in the chapter Mm -hmm. i want people beaten i am getting something out of the excitement of exacting violence on the peasants correct yeah but then it's also like your ugly face feels like you'd be like Joffrey or like characters like that don't say things He'd be like bored that. Of that. Exactly. You're yeah. you're over that. We're done with that. But maybe like I don't know, girls. I don't know. <laughs> like Maybe. But if, like maybe an eight year old girl, not a I think we're saying they are eight. I guess we never saw Joffrey at eight, so I don't know. I don't know. Something about it feel this feels like mean girl light. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it's actually, this is mean girl. And then he's also trying to be like sociopath girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of like, it almost to me kind of feels like he is, okay, if you get the child who's a sociopath, you feel that sense of like, oh, how like terrifying to consider this little kid being so um, Cruel whatever. Cruel and uncaring. Yeah, but he wants it to feel almost like more personal your hatred towards princess violet yeah so yeah. he's putting things in that are very like poke at that like child wound. insecurity wound yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. then you're supposed to be like oh a mean kid saying you're ugly that's the worst and that makes you feel <laughs> more emotionally angry yeah. in an almost more so than her saying like chop off that man's head <laughs> yeah because who's that man but yeah, or, I don't know. Well, one is something you maybe have experienced something similar to. He's just trying to show that she is rotten all the way through. And the other, you're like, no, I've never met a child who chopped off people's heads. Not once. And I don't believe this one does either. Like, I don't know. So, yeah, Violet slaps her one more time and leaves, la- quote, laughing a high, squeaky, snorting laugh. It's just too cartoonish for me. The the fat girl of it this all. This fat girl. <laughs> like, oh, okay. God, Hi, guys. Terry. Rachel's crying and she's cleaning the room. She's avoiding touching the box. She's scared the queen will chop off her head, which is something yep. she does to people. So we set the precedent. You know, fear of your life's on the line. And we set up like when when they go watch the beheadings, Violet likes to watch and Rachel looks away. <laughs> What a good girl. I know. Like, uh, those are the only two options. That's it. I know Not like a- washing out of duty and feeling like mixed up about it. Like, they're, they're, you know, there's no, there's just good girl. 
avoids watching executions. Bad oh, girl no. relishes in murder. I mean, I guess Kaylin and Richard are the middle of those two. Sure, yeah, but they didn't arrive yet. Yeah, you're right. Right? All right. Okay, just saying. Mm. They watch and cry. <laughs> exactly. Feels like the box is watching her, which you're like, mm, given the ancestors and all that. Wow. Yeah. You're like, oh, maybe somebody, it is. Somebody is watching. Yeah. And she puts it back on the pedestal, and right as she's doing that, in walks Wizard Giller. No, he does not walk. His feet don't tread on the ground, Wizard Giller. It's like he teleported. <laughs> Child, what are you doing with the locks? <laughs> does he say that? No. He's very nice from the very beginning. He's got a long, pointed white beard. He is bald. Um, uh-huh. He's got a bony face, hooked nose, oh. Oh. dark eyes. Wow. Rachel's immediately like, don't kill me yeah. for touching this box. Has she seen the wizard kill people? That's that's a question, right? What no, but think? I think the wizard's just, just wizards are mysterious. Scary. Yeah. So and, and the queen kills the people. Queen kills and people. he works with her. Seemingly, he is... Uh, putting on a front with the queen very much so where it looks like he's on her side. She, I, if you were a kid, you'd think the wizard's doing bad things. Absolutely. I got the opposite impression. I was getting the impression that this is all fakey fake. What he, is? And he's doing... Oh! You didn't you either. He's bad. Oh, yeah. I know he's bad. This is a bad what? dude. Yeah. I well, thought, I, think, I think at the very least he, he's, he's fucking with Rachel. I think he is. Oh. I think that doll is important and it's going <gasps> to hurt somebody. But <laughs> Are you, is this, do you feel like no, these are I, memories? No, I don't remember. Wow. Yeah. You really Bold think. Bold prediction though. Yeah. I feel like he's a, he's a snake in the grass. That would be interesting. That's, I think that, I don't think that because it seems too interesting. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got me between a rock and a hard place here. You know, I mean, I'm either right, and then Terry was interesting, or I feel like Terry can't hold his punches like that. He would have put something in here that would have been like he had a weird look in his eye or something. Um, there was something, really. Yeah. It, you well, know that what would it, make you know him less Zed like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, well, it was it, the description of his eyes is dark. I kind of thought okay. there was something like one or two things where I'm like, I don't know that I trust him. Uh, interesting. I don't know. See, we're going to have well, to weigh in on this. I guess the precedent being set that, well, no, I don't want anyone to weigh in on this because I don't want to know. Yeah, actually, keep your mouth shut. Keep okay. your traps clapped, all right? Yeah. Well, what I was going to say is the fact that he was the only wizard who didn't sacrifice himself could imply some selfishness. That, yeah, which definitely. Would I bad. would think, yeah. That, that's a that's usually a bad sign. Jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lord Raw. Yeah, I don't know. I'm predicting bad things from Giller. Hmm. But uh, in he comes. Well, I guess, in. you know, I guess I have... So his interaction with Rachel is so caring and positive right now. Mm. And I've Terry has not introduced any characters who are manipulative like this. They're all cartoonishly bad so far. Correct. I don't know. So let's see if he's capable of the subtlety of Giller turn heel. Well, I'd love to see a uh, yeah a manipulator like so this. So would I. Nobody's done it. Nobody's so far. done it. Not right. a single. Interesting. one. Interesting. So he says he's not going to hurt Rachel and he sits on the floor to look at her. Mm-hmm. He asks who took the box off the pedestal. Rachel says Violet does it. They were just playing. Yep. Covering and for her. She does like, oh, I love Violet. She's so kind to me. This and that. Because, you know, she doesn't want to get in trouble. Yep. Giller in classic wizard touching fashion oh yes puts a finger over her lips to silence her and asks if she's violet's playmate he says he came to check on the box he asks why rachel has red marks on her face she says the princess hits her he does magic to heal it well see i think it's interesting because i maybe i am getting fooled because all the things he's doing like all the touching of the face and stuff reads zed like to me which i'm thinking terry's just a little bit lazy with his Mm -hmm. like these actions and these looks mean blank mean good and i'm just going with it that's fair and and he's giving you no reason not to just go with it at this point but but maybe he's being a big trickster i'm hoping i could be wrong Um, it's probably gonna be some mixed thing 
Yeah. I, I wouldn't. Know. Well, I would like that. Yeah. yeah I would I like that. Giller says, oh, the princess is not kind to you. He gives her a hug. I'm ser- I'm sorry, dear child. The princess and queen can be quite cruel. And then she has like a thought <laughs> that his voice sounded so nice. Mm-hmm. Like. <laughs> like Brophy. I don't know why I'm laughing. Who's Brophy? I just wrote in all caps, who? Who the fuck's Brophy? <laughs> well, and I get it. That's what we're supposed to be feeling. I get it. This is his attempt at leading you to believe there's greater things beyond what you see. But Brophy? <laughs> and I guarantee you Brophy's going to be her brother. Brother Brophy. Okay, I don't know that, but maybe... Who's Brophy? Who's Brophy? Brophy? So, no clarification on that by the end of the chapter. So, that's a cliffhanger for us. Figure out who Brophy is. Yeah, wow. Cool. Giller whips out this doll that looks kind of like her and says it's a trouble doll, which Mm -hmm. is a concept. Terry loves taking these, like... snip. I don't know what you'd call them, like folklore. Yeah, f- <laughs> motifs from any culture. And just being like, mine, like... <laughs> paste. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't change them enough. No, he just keeps the same name, same rules. Yeah. You know this. Here you go, it's in my world now. Well, so he gives her the trouble doll. Tell her your troubles, and she takes them away for you. She is magic. She hugs the doll and tells it, Princess Violet thinks she's ugly. The doll smiles and says, I love you, Rachel. I think that's really unsettling. It's so creepy. And I don't know why. Both times when I read it, I imagine the doll was, like, really small. Is that true? No, I think it's It's a doll-sized doll. I think you're imagining that because actual, like, worry dolls are Are really little. Yeah, that's what happens when you steal ideas, that you have to explain things beyond the concept. But Well, in her, like, kissing and hugging, it made me think it was, like, a normal size. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, this is some Annabelle shit. I I would not trust... Oh, Oh, a wizard hands you a doll and it says, I love you! (laughs) I'm throwing it in the fire immediately. Like, but in this universe... Like, we have this whole, like, built-up horror concept around, like dolls i think it is creepy i think they're creepy and none of them have ever come to life i'm saying it's like yeah it's like a thing annabelle i don't know like it, this girl doesn't have dolls are amazing you told me she didn't watch that movie best toy it's so good no. <laughs> like it's the best toy they've ever had in uh, their life yeah they don't get toys and then it's like like they haven't seen a furby <laughs> you know what i mean like Fuck. so this is exciting Ah, wama. <laughs> Don't they do that? <laughs> I guess. Something like that, maybe. Right. Bad Furby impersonation. Uh, what are they? Like, mm, yum. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else they say. They say, Furby, dance. Dance, dance. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, see, see, I knew someone here had good Furby lore knowledge. Anyway, this is her Furby, okay? Cool. You didn't think the Furby was creepy? No, I didn't, because I know what electronics are. We're not in the Westlands. She knows what magic is. She's in the Midlands. Yeah, so there's no bad magic dolls in the Midlands? No. All right, well. Not yet. All right, so the doll loves her, and no one else does, except for (laughs) Brophy. So she's not, she's like, I can't have a doll. The princess said if I ever have a doll, she'll put it in the fire. So he's like, where do you sleep? And then she's like... I sleep in the princess's bedroom. She locks me in the box at night. The I think that's mean. Box I... at night? The box at night. She locks me in the box at night. But see, so this was where I'm getting hung up. I'm going, if little Ramsay Bolton. Is it Ramsay? 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 It's not Ramsay. <laughs> Isn't that how it's spelled? It's Ramsay with a Y. You, you say it as say. No, his name is R A M S A Y. Yeah, Ramsey. Ramsey with an A? Correct. I don't know. Ramsey. Ramsey Bolton. Ramsey Bolton. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking well, whatever. If you said little Ramsey at eight years old was keeping little boys locked in a box at the foot of his bed, mm-hmm. I probably would have been like, oh, that goes hard. That's so crazy. Yeah, because he's like emotionally manipulating them and like cutting their flesh off and stuff. Princess Violet's not going to do anything. But they were just getting started. You would have had to have started better. (laughs) I just can't quite put my finger on. I can't point to it and go, All of it. Every bit of it. I know, but it's so, like, 
difficult to ex- to articulate. You don't find that frustrating? I do. No, I don't. He's using crayons trying to like carve something out of marble. It's right, like, well, it I guess I want to be able to explain what is the crayon and what's the... The idea is fine. The well, you but the way we're reacting is it suggests the idea is not fine. The idea is fine. The execution is horrific. Why? And Why is you, it so bad? What do we think is bad for about an idea it? that requires yeah. a lot, and you don't put in any effort? It looks so stupid. I guess so. It's like all right. Here's an example. Okay. Yeah. If yeah. I'm like, all right, I have a story idea. Kids in a kindergarten <laughs> class all have superpowers. Okay. You're like. Could be cool. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you thinking? We go home with little Bobby and we like explore his life. And then what's the moment where the powers switch on? And then how does that change him? Do kids have like an inner narrative like this? And then like, yeah, it is like their imagination versus the, the world at large. Like how much really changes for a kid versus like getting tons of power. And then what about the different types of power and how they're going to interact with each other now? Is there going to be a bad one of them? Like you're thinking of all these things because there's like a million ideas within that idea. Mm -hmm. And now you have to create a good story. Okay. But what if I just said... Tony went home and had super strength. He punched a hole through the wall. He always wanted, hated his brother. He killed his brother. <laughs> You're like, that's the worst story ever. That's not a good usage of that cool idea. And that's what Terry did here. <laughs> oh my god. Don't punch a hole in your brother with superpowers and say it's a good kindergarten superpower story. So, I don't know. We're finding out Princess Violet keeps her locked in a box. It does feel... Okay, we're introducing, like, this power dynamic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mean lady <laughs> concept now. And knowing that we're going to introduce, soon, yeah. uh -huh. we're going to kind of do this um, now on an adult level. This is my problem. Makes me feel a little weird. They are kids. These are kids. But it has adult sexual themes. But so would... Like in a Game of Thrones, so would that. Correct. So would that. Yes, and it, that's that's part of the problem. It's something about it's I strange. I don't want that. And then, like, I know, and I'm gonna really go in on this idea when we get to the Mord Sith. Mm -hmm. I was reading uh, an AMA that Terry did yep. way back in the day on Reddit, and he was very offended at the suggestion that the Ford Sith were inspired by BDSM and dominatrixes. <sighs> and we'll get into it. Cause I think that is just the craziest statement I've ever heard in my life. Um, First off being offended by it is dumb as hell, but also it's like, once again, you copy and pasted the idea and then said, it's not that. I mean, maybe he thinks that's not where he got Does he it. Does he think he came up with it? <laughs> Buddy, that's where he got it. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, so it starts to feel weird when you're like, the more it says to me are like, come on, I understand there's more complexity to it, right? It sure. wasn't just written to be like erotica or anything. No. But just, no. there's something going on there with sex and power. Yep. And then to see certain themes popping up here feels off-putting to me in a way that is different than somebody exploring that better i guess and it's not and and if this was the first instance uh of which people using power over children in this book or, but, or children ch exploring these sexual themes or any of that but we've done it from a couple of angles at this point we have a canonical pedophile yeah and then we have the lord of pedophiles <laughs> so i don't know and then we have Dark and Raw stealing uh, Sidon on his dragon to give to his pedophile. And then we're diving right into this. And then we have the Mord Sith to back. This book has a lot of confused sexual theming. Yeah. And he's just throwing it on anybody. Which you can do because it exists but I guess in humans. Hearing, but Hearing him say that he didn't think yeah. there was any sexual element to it. That feels like the, the... It's so interesting because you're like, okay, so then maybe that's why he thought this was, like, totally okay and not having any... I don't know. But we're too, like... We're, like, Coomer-brained also. Us? Yeah, us. So... We're not Coomer-brained. Yes, we are. Maybe you are. I'm Chad Max over here. 
But... We're a little coomer brained, and so. But I think we're right. I know we're right. <laughs> we had problem. to coom to to find the truth. That, yeah. That's the greatest cognitive dissonance imaginable to say that the Mord Sith don't have a sexual element to them. Uh, it, it literally, directly inspired by dominatrixes. It's so stupid. But we will get there. Yeah. Okay, wait, no. There's... Okay, first, I'm seeing something coming up that kind of points to your Giller's a bad man theory. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Give me it. Well, first, they're still... She, she's locked up. She says, sometimes the princess sends her out to sleep outside at night when she's mad at her, and the princess thinks she hates it. Mm-hmm. But it's not true. She actually has a wayward pine, our lovely... Woohoo! The not real thing that Terry made up. That, that does good still, people use. Still sound... <laughs> Good people you're, you're sleep good under this go. tree. I wonder if we'll ever see a bad guy sleeping under a wayward nope, pine. Nope. It wouldn't allow him. Well, yeah. So she sleeps under that and she likes it in there. But she pretends she doesn't so she could go out more often. Okay. Great. She can go to the bathroom wherever she wants. Yeah. Uh, so the wizard tenderly cupped his hands around her face and it made her feel special. I think saying uh-huh. that it made her feel special is our maybe our clue that mm-hmm. he's in, he knows that and he's doing mm-hmm. it intentionally but then it calls into question zed's use of this why is he not being a manipulator i think he's very aware that he has the power to be a manipulator he just, he just do like bad he likes making it. people feel special and but then he, leaving he believes it, there. it well yeah he just Right. I, no, I think he's There's like, a light and dark magic make, to that. I'll course. make you feel special by doing these things. But since I believe you're special, there's nothing bad about it. Where if Gillard does not think Rachel is special, then it's a little evil. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But yeah, but Gillard's crying in the club right now. <laughs> Giller is Crocodile tearing up. Crocodile tears. I don't believe it. He tells her he's going to leave. God, it's so convoluted. He's going to leave the doll in the flower pot yeah, in the uh, garden. There's a planter. He's going to put the doll he's gonna in He's going to put the doll in He's it. also going to put a fire stick in it. Yeah, so she can light. He, he gives her a magic lighter. Yeah, so she can make fires when she's outside. She hugs him and says, thank you, Wizard Giller. Yep. He says, you can call me Giller. Cool. <laughs> Giller leaves. She... Runs through the castle. The castle? The castle. Where the fuck are we? We're well, in the Midlands. What in a is castle. she the queen of? Who's, what Millennia. kingdom? Millennia. What kingdom is this? There's no map that would show it. I'm sure it's on in the map, but like, it's Give just me, like a I dot. just, this is so, oh my god, I'm like, my brain is dying as I'm and like. you'll never get it. I know, I'm like. Yeah. Where like I I can't even Where? believe what are the cultural norms? Yes, who are these people? This is the least interesting like traipse through a castle I've ever read. But see, that's what I'm saying. I do sometimes like I'm like fuck you, Terry, for saying that this is not fantasy. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But then sometimes I'm reading it and I'm like, he's right. It's not. You're right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's true. He's right. It's not fantasy. He's doing something else and just took like. Fantasy Five percent of fantasy optics and just put them in for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why he chose that. It's like almost like he's just literally being like, I need I know I need a story skeleton. Yes. So let me do that to put in my black and white worldview. Well, like it just feels like he is writing something that's very at the level of a parable. I guess yeah. that's the right word. Oh, I don't that, know. There's a lot of biblical shit. You're right. And then, well, it didn't need, you don't need this many books for a parable, okay? No, this is a money printing machine. Yeah. So he can ride his uh, race cars around. <laughs> wow, okay, that's a little harsh. No, I think he likes writing them. Well, clearly. I think he enjoys it. Yeah. He, does, he gets something out of the process. And so, other people are getting something out of it as well. I did. So, okay, let's back it up a little. I hate consecutive chapters in this, and I still like reading it. I, I don't really understand I know, there, why. It's, it's absolutely insane, really, it's insane. what's going he on He did here. something. It's insane what's happening here. So, okay. Yeah, she, she, she traipses through a castle. I, don't, I didn't write any details down from the entire trip, because there really were there none that mattered. Any. And then she winds up in the kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. She's going to go tell off those two chefs. Uh, and we get two Muppet-esque cooks mixing something in a bowl and fighting like, whoa, 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 and they knock it over and break it on the floor, right? Yes. I'll, uh, I don't know, that cartoon. Well, we need, uh, I'll say the dialogue because it gives Thank us you. a little bit we of need it. 
context. Uh, one chef says, what are we going to do now? The other chef says, we don't have any more of the ingredients Father Rawl sent to us. Holy You're like, Holy shit. Why is... Why is Father Rawl employing <laughs> chefs is... in this woman's castle? Why is Dark Rawl sending ingredients to the chefs? Mm-hmm. I've got an idea. Just keep your mouth shut. Get me brown ingredients. Once again, what... They both smiled. It'll work. Just let me do the talking. Brown. Okay. Well, okay. This whole thing from here and into the uh, banquet. Yeah, we'll call it that. Very much so has this. Okay. Now I'm, I'm like selfishly comparing it to the book I just read mm-hmm. because it really, it's so weird. I just read The Master and Margarita and it is this like insane absurdist satire of soviet russia mm-hmm. back in the day yeah, there's yeah. a lot of parallels as a matter of fact from that like the the criticisms in that book of the government and what terry ends up doing here mm. and it's funny because i was thinking like honestly like a scene a buffoonish scene like this where it is like just give me brown ingredients it'll be fine for the spell and the thing would fit in that book yeah. fairly well Here's the thing, though. The whole book, the tone is set up to be stupid and silly. Yep. And you're kind of like, that's the joke. I'm here to almost like laugh at how simplistically dumb the parables you're creating for me are. Yes. That's the whole tone. So like when they say, get me brown ingredients, you're like, not, there's no cognitive dissonance. You go, yeah, that's stupid. And he knows it's stupid. And we're writing it this way intentionally for the laugh and the this and the that. Uh That is not what this book feels like at all. No, but. At all. All. But I guess this is that. when he shifts to that, and it's like pretend that's what we're doing now. You just I get can't, you just get whiplash. I'm like, no, I can't do that. When, where was the clue that I was supposed to be taking everything as an absurdist farce? That's, that's like, what I'm suddenly. saying. Like that is an absurdist moment take on this and there are some authors that can deftly wield that think, pen. I don't know. I, I think um yeah, like a like a Vonnegut does it. He that's, dives oh, in so and out of though. absurdism. Yeah, that's so that, different. Yeah, of course it's different. <laughs> it's so different. I'm not comparing the two. I won't bother to Well, because to I think there up, is such you know. a clear delineation between wh- which one we're doing. and Yes, you because get he's this, very good. You get the sense that you're like, oh, we're very intentionally rotating I think this is, this is a, a Vonnegut moment that Terry thought he was skilled enough to pull off. Yeah. And he wasn't. And here we are. Right, but I'm trying to be like, is it a little better if I view it through that lens, right? Sure. It is, because when I read it straight, (laughs) and I go, oh, as if this is any other fantasy book, and I'm supposed to be like, this is just, oh, this is the banquet. Is this written well in how I think a banquet would go? No. The answer is, oh my god, no. It's terrible. It's really, really, really nothing, bad. Nothing nothing happens. But if I read it as satire of uh, of political commentary, it's a little bit better. It requires a defter hand and it, more poetry than he's capable of. Though. That no, is for sure true. But it's still a little bit better in that context. My problem is that tone doesn't fit No. anything else, really. No, I agree. I guess except for Michael's speech. Yeah, it, it's almost the I same thing. I guess it thing. just feels like he's just like any time. Like, I want this to feel like a real grounded world, except when political people are doing things, then it becomes this farcical, over-the-top joke. And I'm like, yeah, that, where's they the... can't, ex- everyone can't be existing in this universe together. It's weird. It's very weird. But <laughs> this is like ter- how Terry views the government, I guess, or or like, I don't know. Either you say, I am aware the government is not this the politics and the government are not this simplistic and I will therefore explore it as not that simplistic mm-hmm. or I need you to go in order to get at the core of something about it I'm going to be overly simplistic but then you commit to that agree it's like we're, we're getting a here's the magic sword go fight the most evil man in the world story point A to point B and then we're going 
can we criticize every type of government I don't well, like right. on the on the journey? Right, because you're like, there's a seriousness to like the hero's journey that like does not quite mesh with no goofy satire. But then again, oh, when you think of like the Odyssey and stuff, like there are moments where. I guess things are oh weird God. you know like things are Whoa. things do depart the realm of sanity oh my god and enter so maybe this you're is, right this is his I alice okay. in wonderland wait bitch see this is what i was saying what in the at the top of the episode yeah. i said i just kept thinking about it more and more and more and then i was like especially after reading that book and i was like maybe that's what he's doing and maybe it's kind of better when yeah. i start thinking that way you know i don't know I, I don't I don't think so. A but little, maybe. a little. It, it's got something in it. I just wish it was more fun. It's that, definitely not fun. It's 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 very like eye roll inducing. So much of it, but again, I'm like, oh, am I coming at it expecting like, a thing that it's not? Because if it's Alice in Wonderland, where's the bright colors? Where's the dancing cards? Like go far, right, go more right. farcical. And then if it's I don't know political commentary there's not very much here it's just like a couple of monologues and then like they're not very well written and they're almost the same as what michael was saying a little bit like it has the same tonality or or raw it's just like copy paste ideas being like vomited at people and like there's no real pushback it's not right like it doesn't feel that's my problem i want it feels like we're in the agora and like like wizened sages are just yelling at each other i don't know i don't know i feel really mixed up about it all it's it because it feels it feels like we're trying to find the oil and the water that he threw into the same pot and call what what i don't know i want to know if terry was inspired by russian literature he probably was i'm feeling conflicted how did you like do you guys when you read this are you reading it like you would any other fantasy book like wheel of time (laughs) like are you reading it that way and then going like this seems okay or are you guys getting in this like political headspace where you're kind of like ooh, the commentary of i don't know communism and socialism is just so funny the way he's presenting it to us i do think the hardcore fans like if i went on like the facebook group the people who are like hella dedicated the facebook group that's where they are that's where they are if like the people that are very dedicated to terry i think they're taking it that like they're in that like satire break they're like people who really are like so strongly politically opinionated against these things sure that that to them is just like hilarious right like they're like oh my god yes i just don't think there's anything to really like cling on to there's no back and forth where i'm like i could see both sides they don't want to see both sides i understand they already know where their what their opinion is similar to the book i'm reading right because like this man actually it's by a russian who lived through it for russians and there isn't an attempt to grapple with it because it's just a condemnation it's like we all agree we fucking hate this shit right and then that's where the tone so it's a a lambast only exactly that's all it is okay so then i'm like and that's clearly what this is that's what this is for people yeah yeah it is a lot more palatable and understandable when it's coming from somebody who lived through it i think the weirdness comes from terry where you're like okay i believe you don't like this like this via reading about it and hearing about it but like we know you didn't live through a communist regime no unless there was one in maine that i'm not saying you have about. to like the idea you certainly not but yeah like that level of like we don't even have to argue about it really to me feels compelling only from somebody getting their real lived emotions out versus terry we know you are just engaging with this conceptually on some level so i'm gonna need it oh i guess i'm like i just don't want to hear it from you i don't want to hear this level of one and done from you i want it from other people and from you if you want to explore it i need it to have yeah more of that back and forth because it's not coming from an emotional experience place does that make sense exactly well it's like the three body problem when you read that yeah i I don't know for a fact that the author lived through the cultural revolutions of china and all that but it it definitely feels like they did well it feels like they're commenting on something that they know yeah in their bones Mm -hmm. you know terry knows it from like 
a book or two. That's how it feels. And I don't think it's very effective. I don't know. You think somebody in his family like went through this? It's possible. But it just, I don't think he's got the, it didn't, like, it didn't, it's not a splinter in his own heart, you know? It doesn't feel like that. It. That's the thing. It doesn't feel like it's something that he, he's been carrying and, like, has to create art to discuss. Exactly. It feels, it does feel to me like the typical, like, I don't know, I read about politics, I'm landing on a side, which I think the, that's perfectly fine, and then just being, like, incensed ideologically that people don't that's agree it. with that's you. That's what it feels like. And it's kind of like, ugh, I don't know, it's just like a little surface. this whole surface. book is ideological sparring in in a very silly well, no, way. But it's not sparring. No, that's that, the problem. ideological... I, I would love if he was actually trying to like grapple with no. this yeah, it's, in it's, some way. I don't again, I don't need somebody who lived through it and just wants to write a piece about about personal experience. I don't need you to grapple with it because that's not where this is coming from. I guess I'm like, is this coming from an emotional place, Terry, or is it just an ideological place that makes you angry? That's not the same as having an emotional connection to I it. I agree. So they make the brown potion. They start working on that. They notice the uh, the little girl there with her shitty haircut, and they go, oh, no, someone saw us. So then they bribe the shit out of her. Mm-hmm. They give her a big hunk of meat. It sounded good. It did sound good. Oh, yeah, she says, don't burn the princess's meat, and they go, fuck, we did that last time. We're not going to do it this time. Cool. They give her a huge chunk of meat. She eats it like a little savage. It's, like, dripping all over the place, and she feels like a queen herself now. She also gets lemon pie. And then she gets a slice of lemon pie. Also sounded good. And then they they go, <laughs> you didn't see nothing, you hear me? And she goes, well, I don't know, I saw you guys cooking. And they're like, wow, this kid's really sharp. And actually, I guess she's really dumb. I don't know. Yeah. The... Whatever. Let's get out of the kitchen. Who cares? So, yeah. They're, so we go to the banquet. The queen and the princess are they're at like a elevated, high, long table. You know the classic. The classic. The, why use your imagination here? So our description of the banquet, all we get, she watched all the fine ladies and gentlemen dressed in pretty dresses and colorful coats, sitting at the long tables, eating from fancy plates. She, wow. She didn't I want to go to this feast. Um, so Rachel's mostly ignored at the banquet, says to, Rachel says to Princess Violet, is your meat juicy enough? And she's like, yeah, actually. Which you're like, oh, okay. So she doesn't, you know, she's being a little fair. <laughs> Yeah. She's like, actually, it's pretty good. Rachel says, I told the cooks it was mean to give you bad meat. And Rachel says, you're right. They shouldn't be so mean to me, which is just very similar to the way Dark and Raw acts. He's always bad doing... Bad people are like this. Yeah. Wow. You know, I'd like a little a variation in the attitude and speech patterns of the bad people. Look elsewhere. Would like that, personally. So... Queen Malena is sitting there with her little dog, which is resting on her big fat arm. Oh, did you know that when you have a bad little fat daughter, it's because you are an even more bad, even more fat queen? Did you know? Yeah, I know the explanation is going to be... We're just trying. Yeah, we're just trying to show you that they're stealing all the food from the from the agricultural class. Yeah. Oh, but you know, if we consider this from the Russian political condemnation standpoint that you brought up, that is exactly what he's doing. Yeah. They are fat lord barons stealing from the worker class. Right. And that's why they're fat. Well, that's what and he's, bad. That's what he's trying to say. Cool. Yeah. Great. It's thrilling. And so, oh my goodness, okay. Giller's sitting there with the queen, chatting it up. Yep. Is Who is he being a faker to? I think you know. Okay. <laughs> so, after dinner, the servers roll out the giant crock of brown liquid and start, like, spooning it out into cups for everybody. Everybody, meaning all the people that we've had great times talking to? <laughs> oh, wait, we don't get a single line of dialogue for any lord or lady in presence. I would Not love... Not a single description of any land-holding fucking it's lord It's because I'm or... after a fantasy story, and Terry said, girl, I'm not giving you that, and I never said I was, and he's kind of right. He's not giving me that. Bullshit. He's diving into a world that he doesn't belong in. Kind of. Pretending yeah, like he's true. not delivering 
the literal bare bones of the thing that he stole. I think, like, you're not allowed to use a dragon in your story. If, exactly. If it's oh, not it's not a fantasy, fantasy story. I got well, a then, dragon. Then give up your dragon, buddy. I got, oh, I got uh, witches and uh, right. shadow things and a uh, magic sword and wizards. It's not a magic story. It's not a, it's not a fantasy story. Go fuck yourself. Can't really do both. God damn it. Well, you're just going to piss a lot of people off if you do. I'm one of them. I'm at the front, casting okay, so, wizard's fire. Um, <laughs> here is what the queen says, okay? Yeah, let's hear it. We got to think about it. Lords and ladies, I present you with the drink of enlightenment that we may see the truth. Wow. This is a very precious commodity. Few are offered the opportunity of enlightenment. Oh, wow. I have availed myself of it many times. Of course, that I might see the truth, the way of Father Rawl, in order to lead my people to the common good. Drink it up. That's what she said. Okay. Okay. So, interesting. So, Father Rawl is supposed to be here. Those are his chefs. This is okay now. They Wait, why are you saying that? That's not true. What? That's not true. They're not his chefs. They're her chefs. But they, the ingredients were provided by Father Rawl yeah. for the drink of enlightenment, which she seems to be aware of. She's drank it before. And she knows it's coming from him. So they she prepared knows it's it. Com- I know. But yeah, I know. Uh, there was a moment in the kitchen where I was like, are these spies? Oh, okay. I didn't, Which unfortunately I didn't think <laughs> is too interesting. So no, we didn't get no, that. No. These are oh, not like poisoners you, oh, or spies or something. Yeah, this is how I write for d and I'm like, everyone could be. No. You know. I. You never know. I figured she wanted this. Yeah, so she wanted this. And she did. This. And um, so, okay. So it's going to make you. The drink of enlightenment. Yeah. I don't know. There's something interesting maybe about this. Maybe. Again, we're just trying to do too much. If I read, if Terry wrote a whole little side story about like kingdoms drinking the drink of enlightenment from this dictator and making, yep. I'd probably be like, oh, is this like kind of fun? I want to think about it. Sure. I don't want to do it. Has this addendum chapter to know. Richard's journey. Know. So basically, okay. So like, let's let's juxtapose it to the theme of the sword of truth. So clearly, yes. this is a we're um, taking a shortcut. Don't like that. Bad. Bad. Shortcuts bad, bad are people bad. Do bad fat people you're do lazy. that. They steal from the land and they drink fake fake tonics. Um, well, and they want to. Yeah, they want to be enlightened without doing any. Work. Not to tarot again. Oh my god. Okay. But. The sword of truth, and now this is the cup of truth, but it is a false cup. And what does that? Mean I don't know. To you? I'm just cups coming in. It's a whole suit, so it's interesting. I think Terry believes that the way to truth cannot come from the emotional center; it has to come from the mind. He definitely does, and that's think that. that's the thematic through line I can come up with on the spot right now. I don't but think he does. He seems to have a certain amount of respect for emotions. Sure, right? Because Richard yeah. and Kaylin wouldn't be as like emotional as they are. I think he just doesn't believe that's the source of truth. Which you can make an argument. I'm fine with it. I don't care. I don't know if I believe it. Depends it. what kind of truth you mean. You know, fucking absolutely. Depends what kind of truth. Yeah. So, <laughs> Queen Melina's truth. Yeah. So yeah. the people kind of look like they didn't want to drink it, but then they did. The Queen drank it. Oh, no. The queen drank drank it last. last. The people did drink it. Yeah. So the cook, (laughs) the one who was like, get me brown ingredients, he comes out of the kitchen. Yep. And the queen motions to him with her finger. I just did not like this detail, no matter which way I think about this part of the story. This is how we enter into it. The queen drank the drink last and frowned when the queen frowned people got their heads chopped off that is what rachel says in her mind then two lines later we get the cook coming out he is sweating and the queen is calling him over and then it he bothered to write rachel guessed it was because the kitchen was so hot yeah no he's, he's trying to continually explain how unobservant and unaware rachel is to people's motivations despite but the that fact makes... that everyone is afraid of dying i think she and could... if she willy-nilly cuts heads off and she doesn't like this drink rachel she'll kill so him. far has shown she's afraid of it that she's very aware and she was worried about the cooks before getting their heads chopped off she's been worried about this the whole time so why now all of a sudden is it like 
Rachel's just so dumb and can't figure out that maybe the queen's mad. You just said that she knew the queen was mad. So why would she go out of her way to think, I don't know why he's sweating. It doesn't make sense. Yes, you do. You do know. You just said it, actually. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Why did you put that That would not come into her head because she knows why he's sweating. Exactly. He's scared of getting killed on a whim. Right. I just like was like, why would you put that in? Because he really wanted to hammer home the fact that he changed the recipe and she didn't realize it. We know. We saw it happen and we're going to go Terry talk about it. Terry has to do things twice all the time. Here comes the chef's speech. Oh, God. Yeah, all right. So she's like, hey, this doesn't taste how the drink of enlightenment is supposed to taste. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, is this, is this going to... I guess the whole joke of it is supposed to be this is how stupid the queen is. Well, she's fat, and she's also stupid, yes. So this speech is not going to come across to her as fake or weird, right? Guess not. He says, it's not the the same. You see, uh, in truth, well, I knew this was a very important dinner. Yes, I knew. You see that you wouldn't want anything to go wrong. You see... Wouldn't want anyone to fail be in, being enlightened to fail to see your brilliance about all this uh business. So you see, well, so I t- I'm, <laughs> this is verbatim. This is this is yeah. Text. So I took the liberty of making the drink of enlightenment stronger, much stronger actually. You see, so no one would fail to see the rightness of what you say. I assure you, Your Majesty, it is so strong. No one will fail to be enlightened. In fact, your majesty, it is so strong that anyone who fails to be enlightened and opposes you after drinking it, well, they could only be a traitor. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, plot wise, we're supposed to be like, oh my God, see how fake the, the tr- drink of enlightenment but is. But yeah. is it fake? It came from Duck and Raw. Why is it fake? I think it's not fake. I think them implying that you could just replace it with brown ingredients means it is fake. Really? I'm thinking it's not because Terry likes to do this thing where he goes, real magic. And remember, with Mm. what we were supposed to learn from the balls getting cut off of the men was that... Mm. Yes, yes. (laughs) The power of suggestion is just as powerful as real magic. Yes, so So this is a trick. I think maybe the potion actually does work. And in this world, suggestion is powerful enough that it will, they won't be able to tell the difference. I see. That makes no sense. I don't know. No, it doesn't. But also it seems like you don't need a drink to agree with the queen who will kill you. So I don't really. I guess it's just doubly reinforcing it. I think it's actually commentary on the queen liking the idea yeah more so than sure do you know what i mean sure. i don't know and it gives her free license to kill anyone that disagrees with her now so she yeah, I think she eats that. this idea whole up because she's like wow what a cool thing now i can know with impunity that anyone that disagrees with like, me is bad yeah, i would love that to be true circular yeah, and, logic. and it continues for another two pages of circular logic um but yeah terry's obsessed with the placebo effect like he yeah, he's, loves he, he's that placebo king yeah. He loves it. He just like loves the concept. He's fascinated by it. I like it too, but you know. <laughs> so there's a limit. <laughs> I don't know. I just like the speech is so dumb. But I like again, I guess in another piece of writing where you are like, oh, that's the joke is aren't these leaders just the stupidest people in the world? I guess I would be like it's supposed to be like funny. I just like, yeah. don't think it's that funny. I don't think it's that funny To be honest either. with you. No. So then the queen's like, really? Well, I thought, you're so right. I thought it was stronger. And then he says, very perceptive, your majesty. Very perceptive. You have a refined palate. I knew I wouldn't be able to fool you. And then she puts him in charge of the drink of enlightenment forever. And people are smiling and saying like, oh, I can feel it. I can feel the magic. But it's like... I guess part of it's supposed to be like they are convincing themselves we're Mm -hmm. placeboing and then the other part of it is that they're faking because like what else are they going to do Correct, yeah, because now they know they have to. It would be very cool if um, we knew any of these people so we could see like, oh, who's faking for what reasons? But we don't get that. That's what I'm saying. Like it's just so not what he's trying to do. It's not like he's trying to do that and failing. I'm accepting that he has no intention of... 
No, I, I agree. Writing it that, that would be way. cool. I'm saying I would like that, and he's saying, "No, I'm just going to give you this it's po- so political commentary all fairy of the tale." Anti-communist people can laugh. Ha 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 ha! But the problem is, I'm not even inherently anti-communist. Inherently, like I'm not like reading this, but I read this and I go, "Yeah, that's bad." Obviously, like it doesn't even like get me on the side of like the real anti-communism I'm just like yes this that I'm reading is clearly bad but I'm supposed to then extrapolate that and say all forms of communism are exactly this not quite but kind of kind of yeah well I'm not doing that I it's certainly not getting me there mentally all right so what uh so what she says next? okay we have entertainment for the evening bring in the fool Yep. So they bring in this big, strong man. <laughs> Wait, juxtaposed with a fat, shitty queen. Of course, is the working class. Anyway, uh, so queen, okay. queen versus farmer. Yeah, exactly. Um, we here have all agreed that an alliance with our ally Dark and Raw will bring great benefits to all our people. That we will all profit together. That the little people. The workers, the farmers, will benefit the most. Wow. That they will be freed from the oppression of those who would only exploit them for profit, for gold, for greed. That from now on, we all will be working for the common good, not individual goals. Right? And you're like... This is bad. Communism and socialism. Bad. So then she says, Please tell all these ignorant lords and ladies how it is that you are smarter than they. And why you should be allowed to work only for yourself instead of your fellow man. Then he says, the common good. All you fine people look to be enjoying the good food, the warm fire. My children go hungry tonight because most of our crops have been taken for the common good. For those who have decided not to bother to work, but to eat the fruits of my labor instead. I'm glad you wrote all this down so we could just shake our head a lot at these points. Well, because you're like, yeah... Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. When it's done that way. The problem is, I don't think when communist, like people who are like pro-communist and pro-socialist, in their mind, this isn't supposed to happen. Correct. Right? And I understand the argument that you're like, once a government that is already established pivots to this and wants to maintain control, frequently, this is actually how it ends up shaking out. Yes, of course. So, fine criticism. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, we're trying to get at the crux of the concept. Like, I feel like I need you to prove to me that this is wrong when it is not exploited. Like I, I guess I'm just like well, I don't I think mean, he can believe I don't think he believes he doesn't it can believe, be but okay not but exploited. that I guess that's not a terrible take right he's saying if you give any any government in existence right now the problem is he's not saying that either he's just showing a bad we're extrapolating that he's just saying when you do it like this is bad yeah and it's like yeah which like agreed agreed yeah um, for sure it's hard for me to get worked up about it. In terms of being like, and therefore anyone who thinks this could work is a piece of shit because I'm like, okay, that person isn't looking at this and going, I think that's good. They're saying, but what if we could do it Uh without that? Mm -hmm. And those are complicated arguments, right? Sure. This is not. This is sort of like, yes, I think everyone, even the people who like it, agree the bad version is the bad version. So what's interesting about that? for sure. Like, yeah, I don't think when they look at a bunch of people making this man's family starve while they have a gala, (laughs) the most hardcore communists in the world are not like, yeah, that's exactly what I meant when I said I liked communism. Yeah, no. Right? Obviously not. So, okay, this this as an argument about the concept of communism fails on that level for me. Uh-huh. Then I have to take into consideration he's saying, okay, when it happens, this is how it goes down, and that's bad. But I guess I'm just like, yep. I think everybody agrees when it goes down like that. It is bad. And then the then the crux of the question that's interesting to explore is, when it goes down like that which is to say could it not go down like that or does it have to go down like that and if it does have to 
Show me that. Show me why it has to. Yeah. Instead, you're just showing us when it went down like that. <laughs> like, Which yeah, I not, know. It's not really compelling. Yeah, I know. It was bad. Described like this? Yeah, awful. Yeah, prove to me that at the filter, it has, where does it always go this exactly. way? Exactly. That's kind of interesting. That's much more interesting. I obviously would like to read that sort of political commentary. That's but, much, it's going to convince me much more to be like, you know what? He's yeah, not even, fuck but, this. But it's like you said, he's not even trying to convince you. He's just trying to make fun of them with his That's fans. what it, yes, it feels like, exactly. We're he's just, just having here, a good time yoking on the We commies. just want to laugh at how dumb people are. I don't think anybody really who's super attached to these political ideologies is dumb and i will say that for both the yeah, socialists the sure. libertarians everything i think they all have obviously if there's val- into- values and merits to all exactly so i'm just kind of like it's just like so boring mm-hmm. but that's why there's a million to go billion trillion comment sections on the internet fighting over these dumb I- these big 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 ideas that it just feels have late holes. to just go oh the well, I'm going to show you the worst version of it. How, uh, isn't it funny to laugh at people who think this might be good? And it's like, so like, I don't know. I don't even know if I should read all of this. And she's like, oh, you would deny the people food because you are fortunate that your crops grew better. You're a selfish man. The crop, Their crops would grow better if they would plant seeds in the ground. And so blah, blah, blah. The queen is basically like shaming him for being like, you think people, w- you would be okay with everyone in the room starving if you grew more food than us. And then he's like, my family's starving and you're taking my food and giving it to Dark and Roll's army. And you're like, again, it's just not interesting because the <laughs> example being given is just so ridiculous that you're like uh nobody thinks this is good and dark and raw is a magical pedophile <laughs> exactly. so I, I we've already know. we've cool. made this so one-sided yeah and, but then yeah he does call them out for having a fire they yeah got, why do they ha- I, what is the dark rules? and raw's allies are allowed to have fires so this is where it comes in now what he suppresses fire of people that aren't sworn to him and the other people are allowed to have fire. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, that makes some sense in terms of, like, strategy. But, yeah. like, you're trying... I feel like he's also trying to convince me that there is an emotional element yeah, to the fire. Yeah, I kind of fire. feel like even these people are not allowed to have a fire going when Dark and Raw's coming. I don't know. I, it feels like he will flip out at you. But he's kind of <laughs> like... I'm trying to figure out. All right, if, all right, all right. If you got you across... Gotta eat. If you get across to me that... Dark and Raw really is just strategizing with the fire aspect. I think it's a combo. I think it is. I think it's. A, he, I really don't like them, but I recognize some of you need them. But fuck my enemies. They're not allowed to have them. Okay. Well, okay. So, yeah, they go back and forth. You guys get the idea, right? You get it. Mm-hmm. It's the same points on both sides. They're not even, like, conversing. They're just talking over each other. He's going, my family's starving. You guys are stealing all my stuff, and you don't work, and I do. And they're going... He wants to keep everything to himself. Yeah. I'm going to keep ignoring the part where he says that he's starving. Okay. And then the queen asks Princess Violet Mm -hmm. what to do with him. And then she says, off with his head. And then you're like, couldn't we have not just done Alice in Wonderland so directly? We did it. It's done now. Weird. Everyone's leaving to go watch him get his head chopped off. And Rachel says to the princess, like, that was really mean that you chose to get his head chopped off, which seems like a weird thing to say when she could very easily chop your head off. Yeah, I think she knows how far she could push it at this point. I guess so. And then the princess is like, you have to sleep outside for two nights. And Rachel, like, pretends she's upset about it because she obviously wants to go sleep in the pine with her dog. Hang out with Annabelle, yeah. Um, she finds the doll. She takes it with her. Just two things right at the end of her thing. Okay. She remarks that the guards wear the queen's mark, a black wolf's head, which I just think it's so odd that like we got nothing <laughs> we, of the sort. Yeah, wait, I missed that. Why twice. even put that wait, in? I get we get characterization right at the end there. That's the one thing we learn. We get world building right at the. I guess I'm like command. End? Either don't fucking do it at all because that's not what you're doing or like i don't need to know that if you were like Black we're, wolf's head. we're not doing that then don't even tell me that it's gonna be like relevant at some point i guess rachel leaving the kingdom 
not the kingdom, Rachel leaving the, the castle the castle, grounds. Yeah, the moat. And... She ran through the walls, quote, that had kept determined armies out and traitors in, crossed a bridge where hundreds, have fo- hundreds of foes had died in battle, yet failed to gain. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. We got all that lore at the end. Armies, traitors, foes. Would have been cool if we knew any of that during the banquet. Who the fuck are they fighting? Who are the? Who is any of this? Guessing, what is any of I'm this? I'm guessing either Dark and Raw or I, I don't know. No, I don't know. Midlands conflict in the past. Would love to know more. And we won't. So then we get a little quick, so brief point little, of view. A switch. little sword. It says, Zed slapped his hand to the cold metal plate. The massive stone door slowly grated closed. So I'm like, it's a stone door, not a metal door, but it has a metal plate in it. Yeah, so it's some sort of magic tomb or something. I don't know. He had to step over the bodies of Taharan guards as he walked to the low wall. Because he's murking people. He's looking out over the city, which looks peaceful, but he knows that troops were there at the cost of many lives on both sides, which is to say... Dark and Rawl's troops. Dark and Rawl had to have been there. It had to have been Dark and Rawl who had taken it. So we're not talking about the third box of Orden because... I think. Yeah, I don't well, know. how? Oh, you think he's in the... He's in their castle right now? No, I think he might have hidden the third box. Wherever he is, some cash. And maybe Giller took it to Queen Melina. Maybe that's why she has it in the first place. Oh, maybe. He's at some sort of cache, and whatever he hid there is not there anymore. Uh, So something's missing. Yeah, so the intricate web of shields had not held. He had been away too many years. He had been a fool. Nothing is ever easy. That's what Zed thinks. And, like, yeah, Zed, you definitely have been away. Yeah, I don't know. You're hiding, like, apocalypse items around and just being like, oh, well. hope it holds. I'm too mad at them. Right. Yeah, I li- all I wrote was, also Zed can't find something and is mad. Well, that is pretty much it. That's yeah. pretty much it, yeah. So, okay, here's my shout-out, call-out, shout-out, call-out. Okay, this is for a Reddit user. Uh-huh. I think a listener. By the name of Embarrassed Pudding. 22 okay well shout out to you because you have been very (laughs) nice um and you've commented every time i post on reddit yep which we love yes we we do engagement but puds let's be honest puds i did a little um sneaking some snooping on your reddit account (laughs) what the fuck's wrong with you puds (laughs) puds you called a you called us out and I don't even, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? What a like, black mark on our house, as far as I'm concerned. All, what I saw yep. in your post history mm-hmm. was a uh, certain post on our Duchess Lumholtz. Ring any bells, pudding? <laughs> it was about us. It was about me and this man over here. It was about the Seeker and Confessor podcast. Uh-huh. You went on our Duchess Lumholtz, and you told... <sighs> The Duchess Lumholtz fan. I don't, what is, I don't know what his username is. You told number one Duchess Lumholtz oh. fan that we were talking about him. Unforgivable. <laughs> I don't know if he needed to know that. No. he didn't. We don't need him around here. No, don't say that. I, no. I for one, in, actually, I invite Duchess Lumholtz fan to join us. Oh, my God. Do you want him live? Oh, my God. You want oh. to Skype in? <gasps> Oh, that's like a dream if I could talk yeah, to him. Yeah, honestly, that, that's too many of your interests happening at once. Um, I would love to speak with him yeah, in Yeah, we depth. Get, get a little one-on-one. That'd be part of our, uh, our our Wizards First Rule extended series. I would love to get some insight into the... Um, the mind of the of the Catherine, Duchess Catherine Lumholtz uh, fanatics, if you will. It's only one. Yeah. Well, it's not true. There's actually people on this subreddit. He There's made a whole... dozens of us. This man made a whole subreddit for this character to just, you know, let's really dig in to... Uh-huh. The... Um, the complexities. The complexities of having your nipple sliced off. Yes. Yeah. No, and, nothing's a secret. We shouldn't have expected... Yeah. Any loyalty from you, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> he was trying to get us a new listener. Yeah. Is what it was. But yeah, yeah I don't think I don't think he Duchess Lumholtz fan doesn't listen. Thank God. Because he commented and was like, what episode? Oh, Pud didn't tell him. Thank you. Actually, that's the real move. No, Pud probably just didn't want to go back and figure out. I don't even know what episode it was. I have no nope. clue when we mentioned it. Um, and we won't be looking. <laughs> but now I suspect that this will get posted. Pudding went into the enemy's den, pointed to the great walled city of Alexandria and said, they're talking about you in there. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I don't want Where this. Where about? What street are they on? And he said, Not I sure. Don't know. You have to figure that part out. Missed. Well, it's okay. I I accept him into the fold. The blood of blood the, of the fold. fold. I accept him into the blood of the fold. God damn. And I accept that this awoken something in him. I have nothing else to say on that matter. I don't have much to say either. But Until we chat. Let us know Let if us you're know. open yeah. to this. Okay, here's all the things that you guys can do for us. Please. <laughs> Number one. She's a princess. You gotta do it. Yeah, exactly. Hey. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna chop off your head if you don't do what I, I'm about to say. She'll do it. Here's what you need to do. You need to subscribe on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube. You need to subscribe. Come on. Just do it. Second... You can follow us on social media. Yeah. That's like what? Also helpful, what kind of socials? Right? We got? So we've got Instagram. Whoa. At Seeker Confessor Pod. At we've Seeker got, Confessor Pod. We've got TikTok. At Seeker Confessor Pod. Wow. Look at that brand consistency. That's what I'm trying Holy to tell you. Holy hell. I do have a Twitter. Don't use it that much. But if you care to follow over there, sometimes I'll I retweet some Terry Good Kind news. How much is there? How much could there be? Not much. I it, only I, it, tri- it trickles it, in, guys. It happened once. Oh man. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's not brand consistency because Secret Confessor Pod is too many characters for for oh. X. Well, that's so. not your fault. I think it's that's Elon's fault. <laughs> Blame that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, over there it's Seek confess pod i tried my best no errs to be seen (laughs) exactly because we don't err we don't make mistakes that's why yeah and then third i have a facebook page um that i don't i mean i'm sure if you search seeker and confessor you could find it don't have a little fun url for you for all the boomer fans exactly that they're all linked in the description below wow look at that just look down guys eye contact Look down. It's right there. Just make us look popular. Like a little. A little bit. Give us a boost for the love of God. For the love of God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, thank you very, very much to every single person who has left a review on Apple Podcasts. That's the best. So nice. It's exciting. So if you get rate and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Mm -hmm. that's also awesome. Appreciate it. Some I of mean, the best. Some of the best. Head on down with your bucket of five stars and uh, leave one for us, you know? What else? What else would you rate it? What right? else? Yeah. It's gotta be five stars. You see stars. this? Hello? You see this? Look what this man's doing. Oh, my God. I, I bleed for y'all. I, I cut off all my hair for you. I don't know. The chapter was what it was, what it was, what it was. Not great, but he was trying something weird and maybe... Uh, Maybe it was effective. We'll, we'll know more well, when we I read more. Well, I think Terry's more. going to continue attempting this type of storytelling forever, really. Yeah, yeah. It's quite am- I kind of I like want to write on a piece of paper. Like I feel like you could break it down to like five different types of storytelling, storytelling like that he elements. uses and like yeah. goes through. I don't like them together personally, but I think. But it's we interesting could- that someone did it. And it clearly sold well, so, like, it's something. Yeah, like, I want to, like, identify them and then, like, go through the books and just, like, mark Mm. where and when we're doing each one. That'd be interesting. Right? Guys, don't get locked in uh, any princess's boxes. Don't let any bad little girls lock you up. And if they're slapping you, slap them back. Anyway, we love you all. (laughs) And uh, Gillard out. Princess Violet out. Goodbye. (laughs) Bye. Bye.